Hey, everybody, Jeff Richards, Holy Isacolius. Okay, hey, you know, I didn't forget about my the rootings. Uh, how are your rootings doing? Uh, is, are those of you who are following along that uh, have been following me with rootings as well, it's getting to be that time. Here is a fish net, and this was cut in August. Uh, so you can keep rootings all year long. Look at this root ball. Um, frequent water changes. I add water more than I change it. I will look at it. And again, these are, I keep these, I have a number of rootings by my bay window and I keep them on these windows here. I uh, love the colored glass. As you can see that beautiful purple. Um, so I will change the water off. If it really starts to get a lot of debris or if it looks a little off, I will change it. There's some debate on the hormone, the root hormone and so forth. Honestly, I've been doing this for 10 years and I change the water fairly often. Um, and I've had nothing but good results. You can see um, some of the leaves like these here are a little washed out. That happens. But we have new growth coming in, especially now that we're into spring. We got more and more light. Excuse Bobo. We got more and more light coming in, so we're going to start to get more rich color and some more growth. So, so, um, so how are your rootings doing? I'm going to show you all of the rootings I have and every single rooting that I keep here, here in the front, over here and in the front, will go into pots at one point or another. I cut a number for smaller ones to sell. But most of these will be in my property. I'm still determined to get some seeds from these fishnets. One thing that's really nice about these fishnets are they make tremendous rootings. They're very hardy. The stems are very hardy. Um, and I've always had great luck. This, this fishnet is from a plant that I bought, I would say, five, six years ago. And I just keep cutting and keeping cuttings and of course the perfect example of keeping rootings going for years and years uh, if you can't get seeds or if the plants no longer available is this Lord Voldemort um, look at the root ball on this monster it's just and again uh, this now this this uh, particular vase does not let light through some of the clear ones when the sun, if they are, if they are on sun, you'll get a little. You can get some like mold, but these these things drink up water pretty pretty quickly. So it's not like the water is going to sit stagnant. But you can come to that issue. That's why sometimes it's good if the water starts to look a little off or foggy or you see any debris floating in there. I change it. The amount of hormone that you're going to rinse off is so nice, so minimum that it's not something that you need to really worry about. I mean, if you sit there and rinse away and you aggressively rinse your root, then yeah, perhaps you can, you could say maybe you're, you're going to decline your healthy rooting. But look at this. And I have about five or six. Uh, Lord Voldemort's because I'm so afraid of losing them <laughs> because I know I can't find them again and they just they're just special to me. They just they're you know one that really mean a lot to me. But enough as I say enough chatter. Let's go and take and let's go check out these beautiful rootings. Okay, here's a couple of uh, these are a few that she, my friend Sherry from Canada sent me and you can see there's a, a leaf. These have they occasionally do drop leaves and it's not a big deal as long as you keep your keep up on your water and you make sure it gets lots of light you'll be fine i have had us uh, rootings that failed have died this year actually probably of all the years i've been doing them this year i haven't lost any rootings none at all here is the um flamingo and these are very very even last year, uh, this is this is the second or third generation. Even last time, they were very, 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 very leggy. And what what I've done, I use these in the in those deep planters, and I bury the stem down. And that's not going to harm anything because what's going to happen is you're going to get um, you can see all the root that has developed, and it'll just start to root here. So if you have extra long, very, very leggy stems or plants and you're transplanting them, you can bury 
the root ball and the stem below the soil, and it will develop roots out from that stem. And it also grow into a very, very strong rooted plant. You can see these are really doing well. Here's another flamingo. Uh, sorry, the pit, the camera is not really giving you a good, but you can see the uh, little fingertips, the little fingertips on the end there, and that is a uh, Saturn, uh, Saturn rings. Saturn rings, remember, has the uh, dominant green in the center and um, the purple thin edge, as opposed to Saturn, which will have more purple and a smaller green area, but they're beautiful. Okay, so here we are. Here's the, uh, this is that overwintered, um, it's a, uh, more of like a wizard rose, uh, has a little jitters, thin jitters action, but, um, I've trimmed a number of stems. That's it. I'm not going to trim any more because it's actually starting to shock a little. If you trim too much, it's not good either. You don't want to over trim it because then you can lose your plant because that's a shock. To, it's like cutting a tree. You don't want to cut so much off a tree. You can really shock it. So just go easy. And this is at the point now where I can see it's stressed a little bit. So I stopped um, trimming it. But I got uh, I got a few. I got four rootings. But yeah, they, as you can see, they're they're they root real well. And some of these, as you had mentioned, if you're following along, some delicate coleus generally don't, I don't expect them to last so long, but um, this one in particular has, and this is a watermelon, um, I'm sorry, a wizard rose, a wizard rose. There are watermelon um, varieties called watermelons that are very similar. Again, the Kong family, there are so many sub-varieties, and, and they're all maybe offshoots of them of each other, patented varieties and so forth that are so similar. It's very difficult sometimes to tell which one's which. Here's another. This is not a, a moon dust. These or the tr the rootings that my friend Sherry from Canada sent me. Um, particularly this one. This one, actually, I thought I was going to lose. It broke. It snapped very, very short. And I was like, oh, you know what? So I nursed it into a really small um, jar. And look at it now. Look at that root. It's a fabulous plant. And I'm going I'm to actually do some potting early to get some of these smaller ones into pots this one particular because it's small and i may do these these are fabulous they're gonna these are just gonna be beautiful plants and i'm gonna see what i'm gonna do with them i'll sell probably two i may keep a few i want to get the seeds from them uh especially this this is so beautiful and i did not expect this one to make it and it has it's very leggy uh, it drinks an awful lot of water. I add water to this thing at least every other day. It just, it's a super therm. There's three of them in there too, you have to understand. So uh, let's get to see if we can get the root ball. Pretty extensive root ball. I don't want to pull the whole thing out, but it's doing fine. I lost a lot of leaves. It, it molts a lot. I get a lot of dropped leaves, but it still thrives. It's colorful. Um, the stems in healthy shape, relatively help, healthy shape. And this again, I know I'm going to put this in one of my deep planters on my deck because this is a fabulous, colorful, colorful coleus. These are really the top in my heart. These are the ones that I, I describe as the ones that grab your eye they go out they reach out and they grab your eye and this and once this gets into a pot it's going to grow larger we're going to get a much larger leaf off of it it's just as rootings they can only do so much so but these are beautiful aren't they look at the color on that and there's a difference you can see there's a difference you're going to get some leaves that are a little different you got some black more like almost like the kong red going um and there that's clearly a, a wizard rose now you could say, um, well, the Kong Reds actually had the white and the black and the purple or, or, or the pink and so forth. But 
The Wizard Rose has a very light, delicate, a brighter green. And again, it's very difficult sometimes, but don't lose any sleep over it. I know that this is in the Kong family. I know it's beautiful, and that's what's all about. And here's this little uh, um, butter vase set up here. It's like a little glass uh, thing. And, and I, I, I took the three Saturn rings, Saturn, uh, off of my overwintered Saturn, the one I'm, I've been getting seeds from. Makes a nice little um, little statement in there. I love these Saturns. So cool. And you know, that's what's really cool about coleus. Here you already have this. This, this is a coleus, folks, all right? But this is too. But they're completely different. Completely different. But then you have these here. That are so close to this, but they're different. But they're still coleus, and they're closer in variety to this than these. So that's, uh, that's coleus for you. And here are the other rootings that I keep. And you can see they all look really good. I keep, I keep them during the daytime. we got a lot of sun coming in. I keep them right by the window here. Lord Voldemort's, Christmas candies, fishnets. I have, what, three? So I have a total of four fishnets, four or five Lord Voldemort's. There's the Lord Voldemort's. Uh... And some Saturn rings, Saturn's rings. So we keep these going. Uh, water changes, add water. I take a look at them. And let me show you a little, uh, little not a really a big problem, but these are Christmas candies. You can see this one's starting to wash out a little bit. The tops are very rich because that's they're the ones getting most of the light. So they're going to get leggy. Not all of them do, but these have. This is the first year I actually have had them. So, uh, and again, these, I was kind of surprised that they lasted so long uh, because they're delicate. And over the course of my experience, delicate, some of the delicate leaf coleuses never really made it. But these two have, so I'm happy. And I did get plenty of seeds, but I just had these cuttings and I couldn't throw them out. They're just really beautiful. But you can see a couple of the, the leaves are browning and stuff. But here, look at this problem I have. I just noticed this. See that? It's like a little mold growing there. That's not good. So we're going to rinse that out. We want to get rid of that. The water's good because I, I added some water, but we don't want that. That's not a good sign. So we're going to rinse that away gently. Okay, so I gently rinse it with uh, the, the water from the sink. And there was a little, uh, when I did put it back in, I saw a little kind of hanging on. So I gently rubbed it off of the stem, just very gently. And I just checked the stem also. Um... If, if they're squishy, that's not good. That means that there's a, a problem. So, uh, but this one's not. They're going to be a little off color, the ones that are in the water. That's natural. But this is healthy. It's growing. That's what matters. It's growing. And we got good color.
right, everybody. So uh, just keep your rootings going. Um, of course, if you depending on where you live, you, you can plant them already. If you're if the weather is uh, warm enough outside, uh, depends on really what you want to do. Some people, you, you know, I could easily just keep the rootings going. Uh, you can just keep rootings in the house as decoration. You don't necessarily have to plant them. So it's up to you what you want to do with your rootings. I use them as a little of both. I use them for decorations during the winter, fall and winter, and in spring, I plant them outside. And the cycle continues as it, uh, from there. So, all right, so stay tuned, everybody. More to come. Season's just getting started. We're just waiting to get my garage fixed, waiting for the electricity to get running so I can get these out into the greenhouse. But I still have another month. I'm looking at the forecast the next couple of weeks. It's still in the 40s at night. And we want to get these coleus a little stronger, more mature. I have plenty of room still. So the longer I wait, the more mature they are, the better they are. But once I do get them in and I get the heater going in there, they'll do fine. Um, the heater really keeps things on the coldest nights. Uh, if we do get nights in the low 40s, that heater will keep it in the mid 60s in the inside my greenhouse, so they'll do they'll do fine. So, okay, everybody, uh, leave a comment. Any questions you have, feel free to leave a comment here. Instagram, Facebook. We'll uh, we'll see you soon. More to come here. Jim's Holiest Acolius. Take care, everybody.